Hi everyone, this is Gail with Pretty Presets and today I wanted to do a quick new tutorial about using the brush and gradient tools. Now these tools have been around in Lightroom for a long time, but recently with an update that Lightroom made, these tools are now located in a different spot and they've been kind of, they've been renamed. So I just wanted to go over them today, show you where to find them, maybe give you some tips on using them and just update you on these new tools. So before, the tools that we would use um, were the brush, we would use a radial filter, and we would use a graduated filter. And all of those tools were located up in this toolbar that's kind of between the basic panel and the histogram. And recently with an update, Lightroom changed this panel so that there's only four tools here now we have the crop tool, we have the healing and cloning tool, the red eye tool, and now we have what's called a masks tool. And it's this little circle with a dotted outline. And if I click on it, I'm gonna see any masks that I've added to my image. Lightroom is now calling masks anytime you're targeting a small area of your image. So anytime I apply a brush, anytime I apply a radial gradient, or a linear gradient, that's now called a mask. And you can think of masks really simply as just a way to select a small part of your image and make an adjustment to it. So with a brush, that's what I'm doing. I'm taking a small part of my image, I'm selecting with the brush a small part of my image that I want to adjust. With the radial filter, or what's now being called the radial gradient, Basically what I'm doing is I'm targeting a small section or part of my image with a circular tool. With the linear gradient, I'm targeting a small part of my image, actually a larger part, but still a small part of my image with a linear gradient. So with these new adjustments, I would really just focus on these are there are different ways to select a portion of your image and apply a change to just a portion of your image. And these are the tools, these masking tools are the tools that are going to help you target and apply small changes to small areas of your photo. So um, you can see when I clicked on this masks tool over here, I've already applied some masks. So this is the new panel that's going to open over here. I'm going to see this masking panel and if I click over here on the masks tool again it disappears if I click on it it reappears I can move this around I can dock it down here I'm just leaving it here right now because that's the easiest thing for me but um, there are the pins for each of these edits are a little bit different now when they're just generic and there isn't one selected they're kind of this flag type shape Okay, and as I hover over each one of them, some redness appears and shows you where um, I've applied an adjustment. Um, and each of these adjustments have I've added with brushes. So if I want to create a new mask, I can come up here and click on this little button with a plus sign inside that says create new mask. I can click on that and here are all my options now for creating or selecting a small part of my image to make an adjustment to. Now the ones in the middle are going to be the ones that you're most familiar with and that's the brush. Here we have the linear gradient and we have the radial gradient. And these tools really aren't going to behave any differently than they have previously. So if you've been familiar with these tools before you're going to be familiar with these tools now. They've really just been relocated and slightly renamed. So with this create new mask button, I can come down here and I can select, let's choose a radial gradient. And a new mask is gonna appear up here. Um, I'm gonna come over here and draw a circle on my image. Okay, I'm just gonna, let's say we want to maybe cool down this side of the image, maybe over this part of our subject a little bit. Now, whatever I did last is gonna select on here. You can actually check this box to reset the sliders automatically. 
Um, the way it was before was that whatever was applied last is what applied now, and that's just what I was used to, so I unchecked that. But however you want it to, to behave, you can choose. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to choose um, cool down. And that is going to apply a cooling effect to just this part of my, my radial filter. With the radial filters, you can resize them after you've made them. Um, by hovering just outside any of these dots, um, I can turn them also. Um, by hovering over them and then clicking and dragging, I can make them a completely different shape if I would like. Um, by highlighting the pin in the middle, I can move them. And with it highlighted here and here, if I don't want it and I want to get rid of it, all I have to do is tap the delete key and that filter is now gone. So, um, Let's come over here. I'm going to add to this. Let's choose my radial gradient. Let's draw another radial gradient again because I actually did want that effect on here. Let's resize it a little bit. Let's rotate it so it's kind of just over his head and face a little bit. And that can help us cool down just that part of our, of our subject a little bit. So, as you probably saw, um, I have access to, with the radio filters, with the brushes, I have access to all my presets here if I just click on the words next to effect in the panel that opens. And here are all of my brush presets. And my brush presets can be applied to brushes, they can be applied to radial gradients, they can be applied to linear gradients. Um, they aren't limited just to the brush tool, and this is how I add it access them. With these, if I adjust any of these sliders, um, those adjustments will be applied then to my same radial gradient and I can click any of these and make an adjustment and that's applied to that, that radial gradient there. So super simple, super nice, super easy. So let's just say that I wanted to um, add or subtract from this radial gradient. Now we have these two buttons. This feature is a lot more obvious than it used to be. We just have buttons here where we can add or subtract from this radial gradient. So if I wanted to add this same effect somewhere else on my image, I could click add. I could come down here and choose any of these. I can choose any of these options. I'm going to choose brush because I think that makes the most sense here. And then now I can come over anywhere over my image and I can apply that same cool down effect to my image. Okay. And you're going to see that this updates. And now when I hover over, I see where I've added with a brush and I can see where I've added with the radio filter. Right. And that's all showing up over here. And I can highlight my brush, just the brush section, and I can highlight just the radial gradient section, which is really nice. Um, I can delete either one of those if I want. If I come over here, I can. you'll see that there are some options for delete brush one um, or delete the radial gradient. So I have options within this now that I've got those, those two separate ways that I've applied this applied this mask or this um, selection to my image. So there are a lot of new options with this. If I wanted to subtract, when I click on the subtract button, I have the same options. I can subtract from this radial gradient and the brush in, in a way that I might want to do. So let's say I want to subtract using a linear gradient. So I click on this and now I drag my linear gradient down and see where I've dragged my linear gradient, it's now subtracting from those selection areas in this area. And I can make this bigger, I could subtract it all if I wanted to, which, I mean, I don't know why you'd make a selection and then want to subtract it all, but 
I can certainly sub uh, subtract from a portion of it with this linear gradient. And you can see that this whole corner of my selection is now gone. So those are some of the new features that, and they're really powerful features that have been added to Lightroom recently. So I, it's different than we've done things before, but the tools and the options are, are really quite immense. The other thing that's nice is that just by clicking on any of these, I can select. Um, if I want to move over here and make some adjustments to this, I can click on here and make some adjustments to this mask now. And instead of having to find all the little pins and access your filters or adjustments with, you know, the selected pin over here, I can now just do it by accessing or clicking on it, the layers in this panel, which are actually really nice. And they do behave a little bit more like layers visually because I can see the different the different options here. And that's something that they've pulled from Photoshop. And these look a little bit more like layers instead of just pins all over your image and adjustments all over your in image. They're just organized here, I feel like, a little bit better. So that's super nice. Um, maybe just one last thing to kind of um, be aware of. Each of the panels, when, I, when I've when i now made these masks, each of my panels are gonna look a little bit different. Um, they're all gonna have these same sliders here, and I can make any adjustments to these, um, but whatever adjustment I make, it's gonna affect all of these parts of this mask. So, I can maybe, if I don't like how cool it made things, I can adjust the temperature here. I can, I can make it less, I can make it more warm, whatever I want to do. Um, with a brush, there are gonna be a few more options up here. These allow me to change the feather of my brush, the flow of my brush, the density of my brush. And that just, basically how much of the effect do I want applied every time I brush over. That's basically what those are going to adjust. The feather is gonna adjust how hard the edge is on my brush. So if I change the feather to be zero, now I have this really hard brush that I'm applying here. And there's no feather to the outside edge. But if I change it back to 100, you can see that on the outside edge there, um, between the inner circle and the outer circle, the adjustment's gonna be feathered away to nothing. It's gonna be solid or more solid on the inner circle and gradually fade away to where the outer circle is at. So I have a few more options here with, with a brush than I do with a, a radial filter type tool. Um, these are really powerful tools and I love using them. I think they make editing so much more precise and effective. Um, and I think that as you use these tools, you'll find that same thing. You'll find that these allow your editing and take your editing to a completely different level. Hopefully this has helped you understand the brush and gradient tools as they now exist in Lightroom.